Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. The International Space Station is doing another slow scan television experiment, SSTV, that is a method of sending down pictures over ham radio. Now, it's not really TV, although it uses some of the same uh, frames and some of the same technology, but it only sends down one picture at a time, and it takes about three minutes for the picture to come down. That's where the slow comes in. So you can be sending down individual images or individual frames from a video, but if they take three minutes, it's more like a really inconvenient PowerPoint slideshow. Now, I have a few good passes of the space station almost directly overhead, so that sounds like a good time to try this out. I tried this before with a disco antenna that I just got, and it really was kind of disappointing. That might be in another video. So instead of doing that, we're going to use just a handheld VHF radio. These are coming down on the VHF or 2 meter ham band, and so we're just going to use a handheld radio, and I'm going to use my phone to get the audio out of the radio into that SSTV format. I've done this before with CubeSats. I had a video on that a little bit ago, and we've done the International Space Station before. As usual, I'm using N2YO.com to get my space station pass predictions. I use this website for pretty much all of my low Earth orbit satellite tracking. Now, I have the space station programmed in to a couple of my ham radios, but this is the UHF, or 70 centimeter repeater output. As the space station moves, you have to account for Doppler shift. So you'll see I have a couple channels in here that are all around that 437.8 megahertz, just on the top and bottom end of that. So as the station moves overhead, we can compensate for the frequency shift. So I'm gonna plug my radio into a USB programming cable. Now, Windows invariably screws up the driver for this USB cable, so um, Windows likes to update to a driver even when you tell it to use a specific one instead. It just it thinks it's smarter than you. So I have to go over to Device Manager and make sure I'm using the older version of this driver. So now I've got the correct cable showing up in the Chirp radio programming software. And this is what I currently have for the space station. I've got five channels centered around 437.8 megahertz. But instead, I want five channels centered around 145.8 megahertz, which is what it's going to be using for SSTV. I'm going to use just the exact same offset here. All right, I've got those programmed in for VHF, and I've named those ISSTV. And one important thing to remember when you're using one of these radios as just a scanner, and you don't want to transmit, you can go over to the duplex mode on Chirp and set that to off, and that will just make sure that it's receive only. And I didn't think I had time for this project. I kind of knew what was going on. I've been super busy lately, but people on my Discord keep reminding me of it, so I figured I'd better give it a try. And yes, I do have a Discord channel. I will throw the link down in the description if you're interested in joining that. So now, as the station goes overhead, we will just increment through those channels, and we should hopefully stay tuned in to the signal even as the station goes over and the frequency shifts. So I'm also going to go in and set my squelch to zero because the signal can be pretty faint and the squelch settings on these Baofengs are not good. Um, there's a way you can kind of hack that and customize it and I'll put that in the description as well. All right, I was hoping to use an audio cable to go from the radio over to my phone and record or um, decode on Robot36 app, but a couple problems with that. On the Baofeng, the audio out is actually the smaller one. I have an adapter around somewhere. Uh, the bigger problem, though, is that the Robot36 app won't listen to the headphone jack or microphone jack here. It will only use my phone's mic. Naturally, it's raining out, so that could be another excuse for me to just not do this and continue to ignore the pass, but uh, I guess we're going to give it a shot. I have got my handheld radio, which these are somewhat splash resistant. I've gone kayaking with these Baofengs and taken waves right over the top, and it hasn't killed them, so a little rain probably won't hurt it. Now, as I found when I did the disco and antenna, there is a ton of radio interference in my neighborhood. I'm in a city, there are a lot of radio transmitters around, and there's a lot of static on these ham frequencies, so... Yeah, we're getting something. Uh, the space station isn't overhead yet, but we're just getting noise from somewhere in the city here, so... This may or may not work very well. All right, we got a pretty good one there. Okay, this is frustrating. Somebody seems to be actively jamming the SSTV frequency. There's just music coming across. Okay, I had to turn that off because it was just useless and the pass is over now. Towards the end of the pass, I just started getting music on the upper end of that uh, ISS frequency that I plugged in. So 
and it came and went. It seemed like people were, somebody was maybe keying up music. So I couldn't tell if somebody was just trying to jam that frequency for some reason, or if I'm getting um, interference from a, a FM radio station, that's quite possible. I got a lot of FM radio interference when I used that uh, disco antenna. So it could just be local FM overpowering the ham band. Either way, we only got one good um, picture. They, like I said, they have like about a three minute gap between pictures. So you get a transmission, you get a three minute wait, and then another transmission. So on a single 10 minute pass, you might only get one picture, two if you're really lucky. But um, we got one so far and it was pretty decent with just the handheld radio and the phone. I do have an FM broadcast blocking filter up on the disco antenna on the roof, but I'm still getting a lot of noise on here. All right, we started to get an SSTV signal, but I heard the um, ending frame there, so we just caught the very end of it, and I think this is the top of the pass, so we're gonna be lucky if we get anything from the rest of this. All right, we didn't get much on that pass. We got a little bit. Um, we got about the top of the uh, frame here or the slide so yeah not a great signal all right we're gonna try this one more time it is almost at the end of the slow scan TV event I have to admit this has been a really challenging one for timing all of the good space station passes have either been at midnight or right at dinner time and it's been really hard to schedule around those it's been a terribly busy week so I have not had time to actually sit down and listen to too many of these. We are going to try one more time with the Baofeng and the disco antenna. I am also, if I can get it rebooted, I'm going to try my Raspberry Pi with the RTL SDR up on the roof. That has that QFH antenna. It is tuned for 137 megahertz. It has the NOAA Sawbird 137 amplifier on it. I think that will reach up to 145 megahertz. All right, I did get that working. We've got it uh, streaming over RTL TCP to my main computer. So I can just go ahead and record it on here and that will record the stream from the Raspberry Pi. Somebody asked me to demonstrate how to do this. Basically, I am just running this command, RTL underscore TCP A, the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And that is streaming the um, RTL SDR. And then over in SDR++, we just uh, set the source to RTL TCP, that same IP address, our uh, port number, and then all of our other regular settings, just like a regular uh, RTL SDR. And we are now streaming. And if we change the frequency over on the right here, it will change it in uh, that window on the left, as you can see. So yeah, we're using this just like we would if it was plugged into this computer on USB. And yes, you'll notice even with the Sawbird filter, there's tons of noise in the two meter band. So that may or may not be an issue. We are getting some actual ham radio transmissions here, these little blips, but I'm ignoring those for now. Same deal as before, we are using the Robot 36 app. Now, even though the app is called Robot 36, it is not using the Robot 36 mode. It is using the PD120 mode. So you can just go ahead and change that in the app. Uh, we can do auto mode or we can go over to um, PD mode and select PD120. All right, I think that was the last pass we were gonna get. Um, go ahead and save that one. That was kind of a mediocre capture. You can see that it's an image. You can see what it says at the top, but it was not a great reception here. Yeah, that disco antenna up on the roof, it's its kind of mediocre at a wide range of frequencies and it's not very good at anything in particular. So I don't know if I'm going to keep using it or if we're going to use some other antenna in the future. Let's pop in the house and see how the recording from the QFH antenna did. All right, well, that seems to have gotten absolutely nothing. Well, I was hoping to get a little bit more out of that, but like I said, I didn't have time for some of the better passes and I was kind of disappointed in some of the antennas I was trying. I did use this ISS uh, Slow Scan TV event to test out some different antennas, test out some SDR, some different reception methods, and the best uh, reception method turned out to just be the Baofeng radio with the Nagoya antenna. So these little Baofengs are really cheap, they're like $20 on eBay, on Amazon. The Nagoya antenna is an aftermarket one, this is the model NA-771, 
So I would recommend these. This is a pretty good antenna. It outperforms the disc cone. It outperforms the QFH. It outperforms the little stick antenna that comes with the Baofeng radios. So uh, if you get one of these radios, grab a Nagoya antenna. These things are great. And experienced hams often have bad things to say about these Baofeng radios. They say they're dirty, they're too cheap, they get too many people into radio. Well, I think they're great that they get more people into radio. If you can buy a capable handheld ham radio for $20, that's fantastic. That's going to get more people into the radio hobby. And yes, it'll get some casuals in. It'll get some off-road people. It'll get folks that just want to screw around with radio without getting a license. But I think it will also improve the radio hobby overall, and it'll get more people into it. So, Baofeng radios, I have nothing bad to say about them. If you missed the Space Station's SSTV event, they will probably do another one in the near future. They're not good about advertising it ahead of time. They kind of just do it whenever they feel like it. So you really have to follow that ARIS, Amateur Radio International Space Station website, and just keep an eye on that. See when they're doing an event, and then go out and tune in and see what you receive. Check out my other videos for other slow scan TV and satellite radio experiments, and then stay tuned to see what else we come up with in the future. Thanks to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.